Good morning, folks. Welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Shroy, your host, and we're in luck because we're standing in a broom field here in Riley County on a bright spring morning. And the other fact is we have Dr. Stu Duncan, our Northeast Area Agronomist, is going to be joining us in a few minutes, talking to us about brome and fescue management. So come on back after these words from our sponsors, and we'll get this show on the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning, folks. Welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Shroy, your host, and we're in luck because we have Dr. Stu Duncan, our Northeast Area Agronomist, with us today. Thanks, Stu, for being with us. And we're going to be talking, Stu, today about probably a, a more pasture, brome and fescue. And, and uh, there's quite a bit of brome and fescue in the eastern part of the state, and it's a valuable crop. Absolutely, Jim. The uh, brome acreage I know in, in the northeastern Kansas alone is over half a million acres, and, and the fescue acres uh, south of I-70 are, are going to more than th that that kind of acreage is very probably close to a million acres of either one of them combined or separately in the state. Uh, well the, and, it, and it fits well into uh, uh, producers uh, uh, operations and, and, ro and rotations maybe not so much rotations but definitely the operation. Uh, absolutely Jim uh, very important for early spring pasture and even some fall grazing once the native meadows or native uh, Rangeland has gone, uh, has gone dormant, and and they, they want to get off of it, or when they want to give it some rest. Uh, this time of year, it's an excellent place for for uh, cattle that have just calved to and their and their young ones to be out on the the brome. It's it's usually and and the fescue, pretty good solid footing. There's some the, just starting to come on now, but it's a, it's a good lot, good place to sit. Um, for cabin, the, right? Yeah, for cabin and, and uh, well, even uh, post cabin as we get those those cattle get ready to uh, rebreed later in the in the in the season, they can get them uh, fleshy. They can get their milk production up. Uh, they right. can carry it pretty well through these. Uh, right now, they're going to be feeding hay yet, but uh, we're not very far from those pastures being ready for those those cattle to be on them. Right, and it produces a, a good forage, a good fo a forage of grazing and for hay. A a excellent forage and whether it is grazing or hay and uh, you know the carrying capacity on the, those brome and fescue pastures for that that cow calf pair is you know maybe somewhere in the you can carry a cow calf on two and a half acres of well fertilized uh, brome grass versus at least two times two and a half three times that much on our on our natives once they get out there that uh, a very good forage for for flushing those those cows and getting them ready to, to rebreed they do quite well on it. Now, now fescue's kind of always had a, a kind of a bad rap against it. Maybe not as good a quality as uh, as brome, but uh, and then you kind of you have the uh, the toxicity problems as well with the, the fescue. The the end of fight fescue that that was a problem has been and still is if if the field or the pasture meadow is is infested with with end of fight. Early in the season, usually not so bad. It's it's once it starts getting them a little bit more mature and starts to to go into that reproductive stage where it's going to be heading out is when that uh, that fescue uh, endophyte starts building back up. Okay. Okay. That can be an issue on a fescue. Right. Right. Well, Stu, we we got a signal here to take a break, and I want you to stay with us. And folks, I want you to stay with us as well after and come right back after these words from our sponsors. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Heinen Brothers, a fourth generation Northeast Kansas farm family, knows how tough farming can be. Farmers helping farmers. Heinen Brothers Ag, selling and servicing crop protection products, fertilizer, anhydrous ammonia, cover crops, quality aerial and ground application. 
Call today to learn about our extended term financing program, 800-760-4964, HeinenBrothersAg.com. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agaminkansas.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer. Stu Duncan is with us, and we're talking about uh, pasture, uh, brome, and, and fescue. Uh, let's continue that line of thought, Stu, uh, on, uh, on brome and, and fescue. What, uh, what happens, what's happening when the farmer notices that the, the uh, yield tonnage is going down or maybe not the pasture is not producing as well what's 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 the first thing that comes to mind well, Jim that's a that's a really good question and uh, one of the things that I always check is what is their nitrogen rate because because of the excellent production it takes nitrogen to to grow good forage this is a winter crop you're not getting any mineralization and, and release coming on from, that's the, a good point. from the soil mm -hmm. um, and w over the years, we've conducted tests from all over eastern, the eastern half of the state with uh, nitrogen fertility rates on fescue and on brome. And there's a very, very linear relationship between production and nitrogen fertility on both of those crops. And it, they, it brome specifically for every additional pound of nitrogen that is applied over the years, it'll average about 20 to 30, 35 pounds of dry matter, depending of course on whether, how our rainfall right. goes. But there's still a very good, very linear response, all the way up to 80, 90 pounds okay. of in. Okay. So it'll, it'll keep going up, but it'll fall down after that. The, the point of diminishing returns. Uh, the so, lodging returns. Right, right. So, so what would a, uh, a normal, you know, if you're shooting, uh, oh, what, what, two ton, two and a half, three ton? Mm -hmm. And uh, so what would be the top end nitrogen rate for something like that? O on hay, it would be somewhere in uh, 75 to 90 pounds. Right. It it'll produce more than that, like I said, at 120, but brome grass in particular is notorious for, for, uh, for lodging right, right, right. when it's over fertilized. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, what, what about this producer, though, that, uh, that's been putting on good rates of nitrogen uh, through the years, uh, you know, that 70, 80 pounds every year, but yet the tonnage or production is going down. What Now what's your next uh, suspect? Well, first off, I would never do it without a soil test right. to begin with, to, to, to give myself a benchmark. Phosphate mm -hmm. fertilizer is my next, mm -hmm. my next big culprit generally, and that's one thing I've noticed over the years at least in northeast Kansas, um, with our county extension agent demonstration programs, we've had brome grass fertility demonstrations. You've had them for years and years well, and years. Seven, 1973, I think, is when the first documented ones on campus were, but uh, the ones that we've conducted since I've been up here, when we have a low phosphate test in sight, we certainly get a response to the 20 to 30 units of phos. Mm -hmm. And you can apply that in the fall or the spring, generally. Uh, most of the fertilization now is done in the spring, plus the guy's producing a seed crop. You know, a funny thing, I've had producers ask me over the years, uh, when they when should they put on phosphorus, and I say yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's, the, that's the key thing. We've got to take another break here, Stu. Hang on, I want to continue this line of thought. Folks, stay with us, and we'll be right back after these words from our wonderful sponsor. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. 
I dug trees by hand for years and years and years. In the process, I wore out my rotating cuff. But when I learned about this process, I thought if there's a way to get rid of this pain, then I, then I want to do it. So we did it and it worked. And I'm not going to go out and dig trees with a shovel anymore, but, but I can do the things that I want to do now. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Support Kansas agriculture education with an AgriTag. AgriTags are available anytime at your county treasurer. They look great on cars and trucks. For more information, go online to ksagclassroom.org. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Shroy, your host. And Stu Duncan didn't run off during the break, and glad you didn't either. Welcome back. Stu, let's continue fertility, because I, I think that's probably one of the more important things about uh, forage production for brome and right. fescue. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, but go back to nitrogen. When does the nitrogen be, need to be on? Nitrogen needs to be on when the crop is dormant, is best. Uh -huh. It's just starting to grow as, 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 as we look down, as we here, look down we can see, we some, can see, see just the green. a little green up. Uh -huh. um, you're still going to get a good response to it as long as we get decent moisture. Right. Um, phosphate, usually you, you see the best results in the fall mm -hmm. because it's going to, just like with our wheat crop, it's going to encourage, it's going to encourage buds tillers and, and, and or, or the rhizomes in that development for the next spring, but we don't have that much seed production in the state anymore. So, you know, an early spring before it breaks dormancy, if you need phosphorus, that's when you're going to put it on. Right. Uh, nitrogen, uh, you know, we've still got some time yet this spring. Mm -hmm. but, but, this but is the you, first week of March But right you now. don't want it to go too much further than than it already is, but you, but your work, you've seen some pretty good responses, even up and growing. Correct, and it, it'll it'll still respond. It's just going to be really washy, and and you're you're not going to get a very good bang for your buck. You may fertilize more weeds. Right. Even though that we've got a good solid uh, stand or sward out here, there there we, you'll fertilize weeds too if you're going a little later. In the too season. late in the season. That's good. Okay. What about the uh, form? We have talked about rate and timing. What about uh, the t the type of nitrogen? Uh, Dry, liquid. dry urea, dry ammonium nitrate, which you can still get pretty easily in the eastern half of the state. Mm -hmm. um, those are our two most common forms. Uh, liquid uh, UAN can go on brome just as well too, mm -hmm. and fescue. Mm -hmm. You'll get a little, a lot more leaf burn if, if it's yep. like this, but or later it'll right. grow through it. Right. Okay. So, uh, uh, what about uh, volatilization of those products? The drys? Generally. You know, over the years we've had urea and ammonium nitrate compared. Ammonium nitrate is not going to volatize. Right. The issue you can get on with that is if you apply it on, on uh, frozen ground. Right. You get a big rain, you'll have green ditches, mm -hmm. and it, it, it will, it'll float off if you have runoff. Urea, we can have some volatization mm -hmm. when we have high temperatures, high winds, and uh, and low humidities. And, right. and it's sitting, uh, you've got a, a damp surface. You got, you got, yeah, damp surface and you got the evaporation. That, that can happen. And, right. and that's when that'll happen. You can actually get a nitrif uh, nitrification, in a denitrification inhibitor. Right. Um, that'll prevent that ammonia volatilization off the urea rather than adding 10 more pounds, which is mm -hmm. a common. Right. So basically, really, if you're applying uh, urea or ammonium nitrate at this particular time, Granted, we've got quite a bit of wind going right now, but we really don't have much evaporation going on. So the, ch the, the chances of uh, having volatilization is not really that high with uh, if you're applying nitrogen at the appropriate time. 
Yeah, exactly. As long as we're blowing, the 70 degree air temperatures are pretty, pretty critical. Stu, hang on. We got to take a break. Folks, stay with us. We'll be right back after these words from our great sponsors. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer, and with us we still have Stu Duncan, our Northeast Area Agronomist, and we're talking about brome and fescue, mainly fertilization. Uh, we haven't talked about sulfur, and we haven't talked about pH, and those two things I think are pretty darn important on total overall production. So, Stu, take it away. I agree, Jim. Very critical. The, the pH is something that I look at almost immediately when production starts, that and phosphate. And either one, you've got to pull a soil test to do it. Right. And right. you get both of them anyway. Um, brome is generally pretty productive till we get hit a pH of about, well, 5.8, 5.7. Fescue will be a little more productive at lower pH levels than brome is. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, I think, one of the reasons its appeal has been in southeast Kansas. Plus, it's brome. It, it's always best to adjust your pH before you seed it down. We have lots of meadows like this that have been in brome for, or fescue for years. And years. You, and, and you don't have that option. Right. But you can spread uh, good, uh, good quality high ECC lime or uh, with, with you got enough fineness of grind, a thousand pounds of actual material, you know, a ton ton and a half, two tons. You can apply that every well, two or three years. Just keep an eye on it. That's just a, a, a ballpark, but doing it consistently and you will over time see that pH neutralize or rise a little bit in those upper levels so that our phosphate will be more available. Well, that's a good point. Later. The two are tied together. Uh, but, you know, we've always heard that lime doesn't move and you alluded to the fact that the best thing to do is, you know, get your pH up prior to when you put the brome or fescue in, but you know you don't have that option. So how we can expect obviously the, the pH to increase or come up a bit with uh, uh, applying over the top though. Yes, it'll be mostly in that surface inch or two. You'll still have some filter down a little bit, but you'll at least neutralize that, uh, that root the, zone the that uh, from the addition of nitrogen. Right, and then again, like I talked about earlier, if producer is, is putting on you know 70, 75 pounds every year, the 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 chances that the pH is going to go down uh, with that continual nitrogen rate obviously is uh, is is going to it's going to occur. Yes, it does, especially again those upper couple inches. Right. Okay. Well, what about sulfur? Sulfur, something that we never consider, or I never considered it in, in uh, brome grass until the, just the past few years. Over time, uh, we, we've the sulfur's been scrubbed out of our atmosphere, then the sulfur is also not in our fertilizer products like it used to be. Right. Uh, ammonium nitrate used to have a, you had a pretty good source of sulfur every year when we, before that process was changed. But we've seen some pretty dramatic sulfur deficiencies almost field wide and at 20 to 30 units of sulfur will will help cure that but you'll see it early in the spring okay and, and we, we will also see a response to sulfur even if you don't see that deficiency almost always in a brome grass stand anyhow okay so are Slide. you saying we probably should be putting on sulfur uh, uh routinely or how, how do you come by you that? can still salt test for it but i don't know if it's more most, mobile like nitrogen yes it is very very mobile in okay. soil okay again uh, application time 
uh, with the nitrogen? Yeah, with the nitrogen is the best time to do it. Well, Stu, stay with us. We've got to take a break. Folks, stay with us as well. We have to take a break, and we'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. A high-energy, drought-tolerant crop, sorghum only requires six inches of water to produce the first bushel. And with its wide uses and easy adaptation, sorghum proves to be a truly indispensable crop. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities, big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroy, your host, and with us we have Stu Duncan. And we've, Stu, I think we've covered fertility pretty well on brome and fescue. Let's talk about cutting management. Sure, Jim. We, we of course want to get, we want to cut our hay for optimum forage uh, yield and quality. Quality. And of course, those those lines intersect, one going up, one going down right. at the same time. But generally, with our with our cool seasons, we'd like to cut them just prior to the onset of bloom. Right. And uh, the pollination, and, and uh, easily seen if you're every a field. Every, every producer in northeast Kansas, or even east central and southeast, know when the the cool season grasses have bloomed because you have that cloud, that that dust going across the fields. Absolutely, or, or a wife who's who can tell it because her yeah, allergies it, go crazy, exactly. like my, like mine does. But that uh, you know we can make excellent quality hay at that point up in the twelve. 13 percent. Mm -hmm. A lot of that depends upon our nitrogen fertilization and if we've added sulfur you'll probably kick it up a little bit there too. Mm -hmm. But you know normally 8 percent, 10 percent, good quality forage. Um, we'd like to not cut it too close. At least you mean grass, too, too, too close to the ground. It, uh, no low, you try to keep it above four inches and that's and with fescue, a little bit of the same. You don't want to nip off the buds. A brome tends to go dormant a little more easily because of high temperatures in July. There are summers it'll grow all the way through, but you don't like to leave that ground exposed to those high temperatures because you can do damage for later. And by, by giving it that chance to rest, that of course, that's when most of the producers, whether it's, it's hay and or graze, and they will they'll have their cattle off. Mm -hmm. They'll be on a native range they can go back to the brome or the fescue. Once the temperatures have cooled down, we start getting more um, in the fall. timely rainfall yep. in, in August and September. You can get some decent fall grazing. Fescue is generally a little better um, in the fall. It's not as washy mm -hmm. as brome is, mm -hmm. but you can still get some pretty good uh, cover back with brome, and you can graze both of those into the fall. Uh, fescue has worked very well for a stockpile in winter forage, and they've used that a lot in the southern half of the state is to get some good growth in the fall and, and leave their cattle on it late into the season. Extend their grazing season with it. Okay, okay, good deal. But I think I think the key thing back on the cutting management, uh, besides the four inches, is that uh, what do you want? Do you want tonnage or do you want quality? And I think that's what you're alluding to a second ago. If you cut it before it blooms, you're gonna have the better quality, but it's not as much quantity. Correct. Okay. And and that's, that's something we've seen over the years with our research is we will kick that quantity up a little bit and and it's right in there again close to Memorial Day when we will have that crisscross of uh, event on uh, time. Uh -huh. Fescue is generally cut earlier than brome grass is. Right. However, right. It's readier earlier in the season. Right. Stu, I want to thank you for taking time thank on you, this Jim. chilly morning and uh, talking about the uh, cool season forages for us. And Appreciate it, Jim. Folks, thanks for being with us on That's My Farm and don't forget next week about this same time we'll have another issue of That's My Farm. See you then. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. <laughs>